He sits on the couch. He's got the remote controls in his hand. Bring me a glass of water. Bring, bring, bring the, the, the ice cream. Uh, make some popcorn. Do this, do that. Mashallah. This is all what he does until it's 12 o'clock and then he goes to bed like a dead beast. It's a difficult thing for a sister to be a sister. We have to acknowledge this. But the reward is so huge. It is Jannah. And no one said that a woman may not work. A woman can work. A woman can be productive. She can work in fields that suits her. She can work in fields that suit her. So if she works among the females in, a, in school, in, if she works in a hospital with the other sisters, and it's an Islamic environment, alhamdulillah, let her do this. No one ever objects on that. The objection is when she works in an environment that may affect her negatively, affect her iman, affect her chastity, affect her reputation. In this case, we draw a, a, a red line, maybe orange, maybe, depending on the country, and say, this is not the thing you should do. Because the best thing for a woman is to stay away from non-mahram men. And the best thing for men is to stay away from non-mahram women. You can be with your husband, father, brother, uncle, nephew, stepson, stepfather, all the mahrams you have. And do whatever you want. But when it comes to a stranger, who is not mahram to you, this raises the flag. And that is why, because of the impact of a woman over men, Allah Azza wa Jal protected them. Does women have impact on men? Men, ask, answer. A little? Huh. Do men have impact over women, sisters? No. Ya yeah, bring. 20 men and put one of the celebrities, one of the actresses, you know, young, I don't want to bring any names because Maghrib is soon. So, and then throw her in the circle. What will happen to the 20 men? You'll find their heads going like this, 36, 30, 360 degrees. Maybe one or two would say, Astaghfirullah, people are looking, I can't look. <laughs> but the, the rest would say, the hell with it. Now, do the opposite. Bring 20 sisters and put Tom Cruise in the middle. Maybe one would look. And the rest, alhamdulillah. Why? Because women are more content than men. We have a saying in Arabic, men, their eyes are not fixed. It keeps on going left, right, and center. Women are more content, more focused, more determined. And that is why Islam preserves the community by segregating them in a sense of not looking down at them, but as a protection for them. And that is why Islam orders women to wear the hijab. Not only that, Islam forbids seclusion. So I cannot sit one on one with a sister teaching her the Quran. Wallah, even if I teach her the Sunnah, I cannot sit. Okay, usul al-fiqh, even usul al-fiqh. You cannot sit with a sister who is not mahram to you. On one-to-one -one basis because the Prophet told us السلام, that if a man is in seclusion with a woman the third one with them is shaitan even if she's 10 years older 20 years older shaitan is always there maybe it will not happen the first time maybe it not will not happen the first year but you have a, a, a head of state in a country I would not say that's USA but something like this who fell to an entrance and he had a beautiful wife, and he is not a Muslim, but he went and fell in haram. So what about us? No, we have aqidah, we have Quran. MashaAllah, we have barely يعني, what keeps us as Muslims. Islam forbids a woman from traveling alone without a mahram. One will say, why, yaakhi? this is uh, uh, um, segregation. Say, this is for her own protection. Imagine her traveling from here to Umrah in Mecca and the volcano in Iceland, was it? Yeah. Is erupted and she had to uh, 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 land somewhere for three, four weeks without a mahram, without someone who takes care of her. This is un-Islamic, even for Hajj. The Prophet said that it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah in the Day of Judgment to, 
to travel without a mahram. One says, oh, Prophet of Allah, what about Hajj? My name was registered in expedition so-and-so, but my wife went for Hajj without a mahram. She said, he said, as some, leave your expedition and go and follow your wife. He did not ask, is she beautiful or ugly? He did not ask, if she, is she white or black? Is she young or old? Does she have a company of trustworthy women or on her own? He did not ask, Alisson. Immediately he told him, this is not permissible. No conditions. Under any condition, she cannot travel. She has to have a mahram. Islam forbids a woman out of protection, not because we want women to be ugly. On the contrary, women on the street must not wear things that draw attention to her. So she's not allowed to wear makeup. She's not allowed to beautify herself because this would be disrespectful for her. If a sister does this, as if she's saying, look at me. And Islam does not want her to do this. You can be the most beautiful woman to your husband. And your wife, uh, my English is awful. In your, in your what? In your house. <laughs> Edit this, huh? You have a lot to do, editing to do. In your house, the wife can be a beauty queen. And she is a beauty queen. Whether she does it or not, every single woman is beautiful. But unfortunately, the media now is making our parameters of beauty change. So it has these figures and these colors and these so and so. Before we had the media, a black woman would love a black uh, 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 man and vice versa. Um, a, a Chinese man would love a Chinese woman and uh, a European would love a <coughs> European. Now it's all European. This is something to do with the media. So in your house, you may become the most beautiful woman in your eyes or in the eyes of your husband. When you're outside, you are only secluded for the eyes of your husband, not for the eyes of anyone else. Not only that, Islam tells us that women must not soften their voice when they speak to non-mahram. I receive hundreds of calls a day, and usually my wife is there, and she says, this is a woman, right? I said, how do you know? I said, it's apparent when you say, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Different than, naam. Wa alaykum salam. So this is a man, subhanallah. This is human nature. Huh? When you speak with the opposite sex, you have to be very careful. You have to, you know how to present yourself. Islam tells the, uh, uh, the sisters, do not use soft voice with men. Be serious. Do not joke. Some of the some, some lectures I go to and I hear the sisters cracking jokes and laughing their heads off. And I'm from here, I'm, I'm sweating. <sighs> what are they doing? They're not supposed to do this. And that is why some schools of thought went to the extreme and said, women's voice is aura, and they should not speak. And this is wrong. <coughs> Nowhere in the Quran or in the Sunnah. On the contrary, a woman comes and complains to the Prophet while all his companions are around him. So he's not saying, shh, shh, don't speak. No, go ahead. But it depends how are you going to speak. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what are you doing? Be serious. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Yes, this is the way you should talk to a Shaykh or to any Tom, Dick, or Harry if it's needed. So, Islam emphasizes on taking care of the girls, especially when they're young, and to be kind to them, to give them love, to give them affection, to take them places, to show them that they are a precious thing in our life. And without taking care of these girls, our society is bound to be destroyed. They, that is the girls, the wives, the sisters, the mothers, they are the safety valve. If we don't have it, we will be doomed. And therefore, I could comfortably say that I can speak from today or from now until Fajr time about the role of women. But it's all rhetoric, it's all words to, say, to be said. What is intended by this short reminder is for the brothers to know the importance of their wives, sisters, mothers, and daughters. To honor them, to respect them, to do 
what Allah has ordered us and to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ when dealing with them. And also for the sisters to know their position in Islam and to reckon that they don't have anything to prove to us. All what they have to prove is for Allah Azza wa Jal. Know your position, know what you're required to do. Don't look what I want you to do or your father wants you to do, or your, your husband wants you to do. Look what Allah wants you to do. And do it, and inshallah you'll be among those uh, 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 going straight to paradise. Wallahu alam. Wa nisbat al ilm ilayhi aslam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa barakatuhu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu 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 alayhi wa sallam.